Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. The Born Identity movie thoughts. I should probably just start by saying I freaking love Jason Bourne. I cannot get enough of this entire trilogy. You know, I... I love the character. I love the the way he just walks into a situation, and even though he may not know exactly what's going to happen, he just, he deals with it. And it's not because he has gadgets, it's not because he's a superhero, it's through powers of observation and this training that just makes him basically by instinct do the thing that makes the most sense. I love the way he deals with, you know, there are tons of Marines at the, what's it called, the, the American Embassy, and these are Marines, you know, I mean, you don't want to face guys like that, and they have assault rifles. There's maybe two dozen of them, they have assault rifles. How's he going to deal with it? You know, his inner lib, I guess that one, one wasn't terribly suppressed, it keep, you know, makes him continue to throw guns away anytime he picks them up. And so, yeah, so how is he going to deal with it? He picks up a police radio, listens in, and, you know, and th that's basically what he does. Picks up a police radio, gets the, you know, th th earplug in there, and picks up a map which shows you know, the evacuation routes, and, and in general, it's a, it's a map of the entire building. Brilliant. You know, make, makes perfect sense. And through that, he, you know, makes his escape. In so many action movies, the scene would have been completely different. It would never have played out like that. He would have somehow shot them all dead, you know. And, yeah, so, so I, I, I love Jason Bourne, and... Perfectly honest, to be perfectly honest, he's basically what I wish I was. And yes, I would, I would find a way to live with amnesia if I could just go into a situation, assess it, and, you know, do exactly what was required to solve it. And then, other than that, there's the fact that he basically, you know, he, he only says it at the end of this movie, but throughout this trilogy, basically, once he realizes he's an assassin, he's, what was it, he, I'm on my own side now, you know, I'm working for my own side now. There is no, I, I mentioned in the review, he's not James Bond, you know, one thing is the gadgets, another is, he's not a company man. I, I never liked James Bond. I'm not really gonna get into a tirade here, he just doesn't appeal to me. Everything about him, directly, doesn't appear, I don't know, I guess the fact that he can get women, maybe I can get behind that, but then he treats them like crap, and for that I would punch his face in, so, yeah. It's, you know, the gadgets, the fact that he just blindly takes orders from the guys he's working for, and all this stuff. He was a hero, he, he was the hero back when people thought that the government was doing the right thing. You know, there, there are some interviews, I think it's Paul Greengrass who especially says this in interviews, Born is the new hero. Born is the guy who, you know, he realizes that the government is not just doing, you know, good things and not everything the government does is right and he's the guy who's going to fight them. You know, not, not like uh, he's going to bring down the government, but just if they mess with him, he's not going to just give in or something. He's going to fight back, and that's the other part of him that I 
really love and really get behind. Yeah, I think that pretty well covers the, you know, the parts of it I, I love. I really enjoy Damon's portrayal of him. I love how there's, there's clearly skill there. It's, it's not even really buried, it's just kind of, it's, it's ready. Or I suppose you could say it's slightly buried, it's right under the surface. The moment he gets into a situation. In this, I mean, in, in the two sequels, he, he remembers that he's the spy. In this, there are at least two times where he basically doesn't know that. Yeah, the, the police in, in that night where he's sleeping in the park, I love how he suddenly just speaks German and then he's like, oh crap, that was German, how, I know German too. You know, that's the one time. The other time is in the American Embassy. Both times, someone is laying a hand on him and just immediately, it's almost like it's a reflex, like he doesn't even think about it. He just immediately takes them down. And, yeah, I just... I, I love that portrayal of it. I love... That might be how it is in the novel as well. I just really like that he and I think there is like a documentary on the DVD it's been a while since I watched the extras but about how it could almost work out that way in real life I'm not sure it was entirely accurate but yeah it the, the, the only thing he can't remember is his his life and his his name and things like that I like how when he's watching the children, you know, in general, he's a little bit of a creepy... He likes to watch people sleep. I'm not sure that's entirely kosher. Marie might want to think about that. Just, yeah, a little achy. Just, just a skosh. But yeah, he, you know, he, he watches Marie in, in the hotel, maybe, or something like that, and he watches the children sleep. When he watches the children sleep, he's like, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I, I'll quit. I, you know, he's, he's a human being. He, he wants, yeah, you know, he's, he says, you know, we'll, well, let's say, I'll quit. Sorry, uh, I'm mixing things up. It's that they, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't think that's a decision you can make. Yeah, he's, he's like, Marie will just hide. It'll be fine. And, yeah, I guess basically he wants to raise a family kind of thing. And then you find out why he didn't kill Wombosi on the boat. The, the children and, and that whole thing, yeah, it, it makes, excuse me, it makes really good sense that that would be the, the one thing that could, that's sort of his, his one weakness kind of thing. And that's not, I don't know how original I yeah, that is, that this perfect killer, their one weakness is they have empathy, you know, they can't just go out and kill just anyone, they, you know, when they face women or children and stuff like that, they will, you know, they'll, they'll hesitate because, I don't know exactly how original it is, I don't know, maybe if it's in the novel, I guess it might be the first of these, I haven't read the novel. Anyway, it just, it, it works, I think. And I love, I love everything about Clive Owen in this movie. I think his entire appearance is perfect. The, you know, he's, actually, isn't he even the only of these Assassins who gets a code name. He's like the professor. That's badass. You know, he's got the glasses. And just Wombos is like walking down the stairs talking about, yo, this is I'm uh, I'm I'm ready for this and he gets shot. And we don't even see the sniper. I love how they did that. That it's not like, ooh, there's a sniper, is he gonna hit him? No, it's just bang, guy's dead. Yeah, there's a sniper. You think the CIA can't do that? It's... 
yeah, it's it's fantastic. I I love and 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 yeah, that I guess also sets up that you know he his weapon is the sniper rifle, and then he goes to the farm, and then there's that thing of gradually born realizes. You know, when he asks the question, the audience isn't necessarily even thinking there's something wrong. It's just that, you know, the, the little girl comes back and, no, oh, he's not there either, Daddy. And Eames, I guess, is like, ah, oh, where is the... And Bourne is like, what, what's the matter? Oh, it's just the, the dog's gone. Does he usually go missing? And Mrs. Breakfast? No. And he's like, he knows what's going on. Bourne has already figured out, and, and it makes perfect sense. The dog could smell the professor and Marianne, and the professor took it out. You know, it, otherwise it was going to blow him, and yeah. And Bourne knows that that's, and, and that's kind of, that's actually what saves him. And there are a couple of times where he's basically just lucky. But he's always, he always reacts. I mean, when he sees Conklin's little beepy thing, which has alerted the, some of the other assassins, you know, that's really just there for, you know, what's it called? I mean, the, he notices that basically by accident, by, by chance. And... But, but his reaction to it is being ready, you know. And the stunt with him jumping down, I guess it basically makes it... If you would survive that, I guess it makes sense to do that, basically. But I'm not sure that would entirely work physically, that he wouldn't be pretty hurt as well by the fall. I don't know. But it's a really cool stunt, and it's unexpected. And again, it's that, you know, it's it's not what would typically happen in an action movie. I also really like that he's not the one who kills the bad guy. If you could even say that, the bad guy, he's, he's working for the CIA. He's working for the, the government, the United States government. And he's not actually doing something that he shouldn't be doing. He's he's doing CIA business. Sure, it's it, it's covert. It's it involves killing people, but it's CIA business. He's not like this renegade who's doing. It. I I love the gray. I love that it's not black and white. And yeah, as I was saying. It's not our hero who kills the bad guy. He gets killed, but he gets killed by his boss, you know, by, by proxy. You know, he sends one of the Treadstone agents, and yeah, because he was too much of, he was, he was too much trouble. Well, he actually sort of says it after which, oh, the, the cost-benefit ratio was just unacceptable, you know. So gone is Treadstone. And, yeah, it's, you know, one thing is that he failed to kill Wombosi when he was supposed to, which, you know, like, like Conklin says, you know, I don't send you to kill. If I wanted Wombosi dead, I could kill, I could have killed him any time. I could tell Nikki to do that. I send you because you're invisible. I send you because you don't exist. And, yeah. That's one thing, he failed to make it look like one of Wombosi's own guys killed him. The other is, he completely botched getting Bourne back. And it, it makes sense, it's not because he's incompetent. It's because he had no idea what Bourne was even really doing. You know, Bourne was using his training against his superiors, and Part of what made him so difficult to track was also just they don't get what he's doing because for the most part he's not even he's just trying to find out what's really going on. He doesn't know. He just he knows how to cover his tracks and he has a little bit to go on and that's it. 
the one thing that is slightly goofy is when he's taking out the guy in the hotel room. The guy who uses, at first he uses a, I think it's an assault rifle, I don't think it's a submachine gun. It's, also, it's slightly weird how after firing that for a little bit, you know, jumping in through the window, firing that a little bit, it's already slightly theatrical, considering the whole secretive spy thing, but okay. After he gets disarmed, it, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with the rifle. He just doesn't pick it up again. He uses the knife. I don't know. It did, it, there, there's like several feet between them. That was a little bit hot. I'm, I'm not sure there was really any reason for him not to pick it up. And then they have the really badass fight with the pen and the broken arm. And then it gets a little goofy. There's, there's like two times where he just gets up and he just basically, I'm just, you know, gonna reenact it. He's basically out of the image and then suddenly he's just... There, you know, just jumping up into the frame. And he says, okay, that's a little goofy. That, that is just, just a tad too much. And then one of the times, like the last time, it's like Marie, you know, ah, he's there. And he gets up and Bourne is there and he just hops out the window. And, and again, it just looks really goofy. I get it. I totally get that that's his, he's that dedicated. He can't be blown, he'd rather be dead, and it's not like he could fight back. Arm broken, hand messed up, nothing he can do. And he was being interrogated, so, I don't know, I guess he chose theatrics over cyanide. But still, it's kind of goofy. More than kind of, it's rather goofy. Now... One thing I don't particularly care for, in, in, for the most part, I like the humor in this and I like the surprises, but the thing about where, like, Bourne has this intricate plan that, you know, she, Marie has to go in and do a head count, count how many paces, all this stuff, and then he's going to call her and like, he calls, and she doesn't pick up, and then suddenly she's right outside the phone booth. He's like, what happened? What went wrong? And she's like, no, I just asked for it, and it just worked. And I don't know, I, I guess they just wanted to, I mean, for one thing, screw with us a little bit, and just, yeah, I had to take a little bit of the tension off, so it wouldn't, and so it wouldn't be so straightforward. Because it's kind of, you expect a big heist kind of situation, you know, it's going to be, you know, very methodical and all this stuff. I wanted the methodical scene, I'm sorry. I, and I admit completely, it's a personal preference. It, I'm not saying it's actually a bad choice or a bad scene. I just, I would have liked it too. Now, that might more or less cover it. I quite like the car chase. I like how, it's, it's, you know, it's not what you expect. You don't expect them to be driving around this tiny little busted up car that, or you know, not quite busted up, but it, it's seen better days, you know, and, and she says, you know, it pulls a little to the right. Something like that, I'm not a car person. And, yeah, it's, it's what he's got. You know, is he gonna, like, leave the car and try to get a better one and risk being stopped? No, he's gonna make do. I especially love, that's one of the really good humor moments. The bit with, so, what? We got a bump coming up. And it's going down a stairwell, you know, it's just fantastic. I suppose that pretty well covers it. Yes. Action.
actually almost forgot the fact that Born and Marie fall for each other. I get what it's supposed to be. Two people close together, tense situation, and add to that, they are in a Hollywood movie. At its core, it is still basically a mainstream movie. So, yeah, they, they are going to fall for each other. I just didn't buy it. It didn't seem like they, sort of the, yeah, it just, at least not more than maybe like an animal attraction kind of thing at most, but like love, I don't see it. There's not really, yeah, they, they I don't feel like we see scenes where they get, in, in a credible sort of way. Well, I don't know, maybe in part it's the only so-so chemistry between them, but at bottom line, I didn't really buy it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.